The lines have been drawn and the maps approved by lawmakers, but the battle over redistricting is not over yet. I tell my Republican colleagues all the time, they may have the votes, they may win today, but we are all equal in federal court. The challenge is ahead and how the new maps are already changing who you'll see on the ballot. Lawmakers lay out the plan for how Texas will spend $16 billion in federal COVID relief funding, who it will help and where it falls short. New tensions over the border, why the White House is facing pressure from both sides of the aisle to change policy. Let's get out there. Let's start imposing this standard. Get them ready. Winter is around the corner. Texas adds rules requiring power operators to offer protection against cold weather. What's new and why it still might not be enough to prevent blackouts. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Hinkle. Hours after Texas lawmakers finished redrawing the state's congressional districts, the fallout started. Groups representing Latino voters filed a federal lawsuit challenging the maps, but the lines are already shaping next year's races. Democrats managed to defeat a plan that would have placed Sheila Jackson Lee and Al Green in the same district. The lines will keep the Houston area representatives in separate districts. The lines did not work out for Democrat Michelle Beckley. She planned to run for the District 24 seat in the Dallas area, but the final map turned that district into a Republican stronghold, leading Beckley to abandon her campaign. And here in Central Texas, longtime Congressman Lloyd Doggett announced he would move to run in the newly formed District 37 here in Austin. The area you see shaded here in pink shows that District 37. It covers most of West and Central Austin. Doggett's move opens up the District 35 seat that you see here in blue. When we take a wider view, you can see it stretches from East Austin south to San Antonio. Democratic Representative Trey Martinez Fisher, who's from San Antonio, reportedly pushed to have his home drawn into the district, boosting his own potential run for Congress. Our Monica Madden spoke with Martinez Fisher about the move and the unfinished battle over redistricting. What I'd say is for those of you paying attention to this redistricting process, fasten your seatbelt, right? Because this ride is going to get it's going to get you know fast and furious. To be very, very clear, redistricting is only done during regular sessions. Our regular sessions are 140 days. We devote about 100 days to arguing over this outcome. And every decade since Texas has been drawing maps uh, under the Voting Rights Act, they have been wrong. And we've either had to get corrected in a federal court for discriminating against minority voters or the Justice Department had come in and tell us to fix maps because they discriminate against minority voters. So if we spend 100 days in a 10-year cycle and we get it wrong, imagine what we're gonna do in a 30-day cycle. Only in Texas can you grow your state by 95% of all of your growth come from a minority, but yet minorities don't benefit from the increased political representation in the halls of Congress. And so, you know, I'm looking forward uh, to, to being in that federal courthouse. I tell my Republican colleagues all the time, they may have the votes, they may win today, but we are all equal in federal court. Does the aspect of preclearance not being a thing anymore, does that, will, will that present a challenge when going through the courts or not really since that was a preclearance aspect, I guess? No, I mean, you know, section two and section five, uh, are very powerful tools when it comes to Voting Rights Act. And, and, and what you're referring to is, is with, with a Section 5 uh, not, not, not being active this time around, uh, you know, voting rights advocates, minorities, uh, and people who care about fair representation still have the protection of Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, which deals with a lot of intentional discrimination. It deals with a lot of issues uh, when, when, when you can demonstrate that but for partisan politics, but for racial discrimination, you could actually draw a minority opportunity district somewhere in Texas. Uh, I think we have the ability to still do that. Uh, you know, we, we can take the, the congressional district uh, 35, which is here in Austin and runs the San Antonio. Uh, today, as, it, as we sit, 53% of that district uh, is, is Hispanic uh, citizen voting age population, which makes it a Hispanic opportunity district. 
today under the maps that have been sent to the governor's office, that, no, that now goes down, I believe, to like 46, 48 uh, percent. That is a clear example of how you roll back the clock and take away the minority community's ability to elect a candidate of their choice. You mentioned CD35, I have to ask, because there was a moment where Chair Huffman said that that was changed for your request. Can you give me a little bit more details on that? Do you plan to run for CD35? Uh, look, you know, being clear, it, it doesn't take a lot of political genius to, to, to make me part of the conversation in CD35. It, it currently sits right outside my front door. My next door neighbor is in CD35. Uh, when you grow the map, you entirely bring in communities. Here's what I want. I want fair representation in San Antonio. Uh, this is a district that has all of our downtown community, our river walk, our federal building. You cannot have San Antonio without having these assets. So yes, it's important to us. Uh, as that relates to me, all of the indicators tell me that I need to take this very, very seriously. So my eyes are wide open. Uh, I am looking at this district with both eyes. I think I'm in a very unique position. I've I've been a lawmaker in Austin for 20 years, so I have have 20 years of relationships that I've made with people who live in South Austin, and Southeast Austin, and Pflugerville. And so I think there's going to be a lot of good men and women that want to consider this. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. The only way I know how to do things in politics is I take my conversation to communities. I go to the streets. I talk to people. I want to know what's important for them, not what I think is the best way that I can lead them, whether it's, you know, in the state house or in our U.S. house. I want to hear from them. What do they want in a United States member of the House of Representatives? And, and, and you know, I will take that job very, very seriously. Martinez Fisher isn't the only Democrat looking to run in District 35. Austin City Council member Greg Kassar formed an exploratory committee to weigh a possible run. Austin State Representative Eddie Rodriguez has told reporters he's also considering whether to run. The filing deadline for the primary is December 13th. Lawmakers made a last minute deal to increase the homestead exemption for school property taxes from $25,000 to $40,000. Uh, so this is effectively uh, $176,000, I mean $176 cut uh, in, in property taxes. And that exemption will last with you as long as you own a home. Right. So there's nothing temporary about this at all. This is no. a permanent relief of of property taxes for homeowners. This is as permanent as a relief as you can get in the property tax. Because the bill amends the state constitution, voters must approve it in an election next May before it can take effect. A bill to prohibit COVID-19 vaccine mandates did not pass, so the governor's executive order banning them remains in effect. It conflicts with the Biden administration's rule for federal contractors, including airlines, to be fully vaccinated by December 8th. Lawmakers also did not pass a bill to make illegal voting a second degree felony again. In September, the governor signed a bill which reduced the penalty for illegal voting to a class A misdemeanor. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick tweeted out he wants lawmakers to come back for another special session to pass those penalties. In response, Governor Greg Abbott said in part because the legislature completed a number of priorities, there is no need for another special session at this time. Lawmakers send millions to help Texas nursing homes. They're going to use these funds for things like recruitment bonuses and retention bonuses. Why they're facing a staffing crisis even as the pandemic eases. A volunteer with the Texas State Guard is booted from her job. Internal emails reveal it was because of her weight, but she argues the Guard is selectively following their own rules. We investigate her case. State regulators make a new move to protect the grid against freezing weather. Why the plan does not address one of the biggest causes of last winter's blackouts. 